But I think the main things is at the end of the day, volleyball is volleyball. It's in the same nine by nine court, and the rules are the same. So we. Uh, <laughs> Is that on the back of your shirt? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's on the back of your shirt. A little free shout out for you. Um, and it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the net. You need to still execute to the best of your ability if you want a chance to win. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the 9x9, nine nine, the 81 square meters of the best volleyball coverage on the internet. It is Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. This is episode 53. My name is Rob St. Clair, live from Chicago. That is Everett Delorme, live from Toronto, Ooh. north of the border. And Everett, stop me if you've heard this one before. Stop me if you've heard this one before. But Imoco Canaliano has won the Coppa Italia. I feel like I'm, I'm, feeling like I'm having deja vu or something. But they're fifth in history, and I believe they're fourth in a row. Conegliano wins the Coppa Italia again. Yeah, this is a, a team that we didn't know what they were gonna. We knew they were gonna be good. You know, they get they lose a Gonu and they pick up Hack Hawk, sorry, because um, she's definitely not a hack uh, in the, <laughs> in the slightest. But we didn't really know what to expect from this uh, Conegliano team, and now Rob as we were just discussing discussing off air we need to put them in the infinity infinity stones conversation alongside perugia because they have gone undefeated in in championship situations right with three trophies to their name now they're two away from getting all five and finish finishing up the infinity gauntlet um but have just been absolutely dominating in italy and i mean you saw it in this one too it, there was there was really almost no contest uh up against malonza um, but Canigliano has looked so, so good from top to bottom. You can just tell that this is an organization that runs well, right? To, to, to just continue like this without missing a beat after losing arguably the best player in the world. Sure, you pick up arguably one of the other best players in the world, but still, <laughs> this team just works so well together, and I have to like tip my hat to them because, hands down, the best organization in women's volleyball right now. By far. Huge credit to Daniele Santorelli, clearly the best coach in women's volleyball. Uh, Monica De Gennaro in her 10th season in Canaliano getting five Coppa Italia wins is ridiculous. Uh, let's talk about the final. Uh, Canaliano three dongs, Malonza 25-17, 23-19. So two out of those three sets, not even close. The, and I, this is a fun game to watch because it really just was classic Canaliano volleyball, like their identity the last couple of years with a lot of different pieces. The only ones that are really consistent are Volosh, De Cruyff, and De Gennaro. Everyone else has really moved around a lot, but it's the same old thing. They absolutely destroy teams in transition. They get one block touch, they dig one ball, they're a good defensive team, and they destroy people in transition. Also, you combine that with 48% perfect passing as a team, 69% positive, including phenomenal numbers from Catherine Plummer, of all people. If, if that's your main serving target in most situations and she passes the ball that well, Corneliana will never, ever lose. No, and I mean, I think we've, we've seen this from Plummer before. She does really, really well when things are going well. But when she starts to get into the pressure is where she's cracking. But, hey, she got a lot of that pressure, um, and, and it, nothing really happened. I think you have to look also on the other side of the net. And this Malone's a team, they looked pretty good out of the gate, right? They, they actually came out pretty strong in the first set. But then you could just tell that it may, like a, a Canigliano just has this ability to smother it oh, yeah. so, so, so well. Um, they're just hands down the best. They're hands down the best team in Italy. You can 100% give them the crown as the best team in the world right now because they did win that Club World Championships in the in the fall or early winter, if you will. And I mean, Vakov Bank was there. They beat them in the finals. Exasa Basha was there. They beat them in pool play. The only team that they didn't play was Fenerbahce. Or did they play? No, they did. Fener no, Fenerbahce, Fenerbahce wasn't, wasn't there. Wasn't but there. They, it's safe to say they would beat them if they played. I think most people would take that bet. But that th those in my mind are the only three teams that can beat them this season, and it's this season because it, and it's clear that no one in Italy is going to be able to do that. No chance, especially not in a, in a series in the playoffs. And that's kind of what we talked about with Perugia on the men's side last week. Like maybe they lose a match here and there, and the the, the place where you're most susceptible to losing one match and then failing to win a tournament is a tournament like the Coppa Italia or the Champions League final. Because otherwise, in Champions League, you get at least two matches in those series in the playoffs. Other than that. 
there I don't see anybody in Italy beating Corigliano in a five match series. There's absolutely, absolutely no not. way. Malonza, Scandici, Novara, no chance can they beat this Corigliano team three out of five times. Also, just because of their depth too. Like remember, right. they have still have Alexa Gray on the bench right now, and she just clearly doesn't fit fit into their system as well. You know, as it's been mentioned many times on the uh, on the Discord, and I think really a little too much to get into her passing. Her passing isn't fantastic, but I think she's a better offensive. Uh, uh, option than either Robinson or or Plummer. So you still have other looks and other versions of this team to go to and that depth f- for a long run. So yeah, Kenny Gliano right now, best team in win- women's volleyball, hands down. For sure. Yeah, you've got top three players in the world that setter opposite and libero. You've got three great middles and four great outside hitters. Like, what more could you ask for? The Infinity Gauntlet is very much in play. Yeah, and I, absolutely. They're, they're, they're definitely going to get the fourth one in, in the Scudetto. Champions League is the only question. They've got some real contenders, so uh that that'll be obviously the most interesting tournament women's volleyball this year let's take a look at the rest of the bracket because this kind of snuck up on me ever we previewed the quarterfinals on last week's show is uh, one was played tuesday caneliana beat in cuneo the rest were played on wednesday but what i didn't realize at least at the time was that this entire tournament was happening this week so weird eh yeah, like, that, I, I, that's, that's abnormal. At least somebody in the chat, if this is if this is abnormal, let me know. It's definitely not how they do the men's Copa Italia. No, exactly. And you know what? Part of me likes it. I kind of liked it actually. And but yeah. part, you know, like I, I I like kind of like spreading it out. But also, I kind of like it just having that focus for like one week. You have a little mid-season little tournament here. I I, I kind of like it. I didn't mind it. Yeah, I was cool with that. So let's talk about kind of the rest of the tournament. Uh, the quarterfinals, we already talked about Caneliano beating Cuneo. That was a beatdown. Novara beat Chieri 3-1. to one. Bergamo, kind of like we predicted, Everett, came out of the clouds, beat Scandici in five to advance to the semis. And then Malonza beat Castle Maggiore. Uh, Bergamo definitely ran out of magic in the semifinals. Malonza handled them no problem. Um, Caneliano versus Novara was an okay match. Uh, Novara took the third in that one before kind of running out of gas in a winnable fourth set, but they couldn't get across the finish line. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't think we, sh- we even need to talk about it. Like, yeah. all of these games l- led up to t- led up to Canigliano winning. So, um, c- congratulations on that. Um, but, yeah, that that's it. That's it about, about it for uh, Cop- <laughs> Copa Italia and me. I mean, can, we just know even more now. Like, to be honest, we just know that everyone else is mid at best. Um, the two best options are Scandici and Malonza, and neither of them can figure out their squad or what, what the hell they're doing. They honestly both feel like headless chickens just running around. And yeah, uh, Canigliano is the best. They certainly are. So, uh, Everett, should we move on to what, more action coming from Wednesday? We were, we're honestly weren't really even paying attention to the Coppa Italia no. quarterfinal on the women's side because it was the big the big day in the Champions League. Um it all came down to this. There was so many diff- fun stories uh, leading into that one. If you guys watched our show with Eric Shoji, you would have seen it. But Rob, take us away. Can you let, Let's see if you can break this down in a minute or less. All right, here we go. So we, we did the watch along on Wednesday for most of it. Uh, we, I'm going to go through these in chronological order as they happened on Wednesday with Champions League Men's Week 6. All right, so first thing in the morning, morning North American time, we had Hulkbank Ankara beating Haybar Pizardzik 3-0. The only thing that meant was that Haybar clinched the win in Pool B and the five seed overall. Okay. So we knew that uh, going into kind of the rest of the day. Next big match that set the tone for the rest of the day, as we talked about with Eric Shoji, was the one that I was on the call for, Yashemsky Vengil versus Friedrichshafen. And most of the rest of Champions League was rooting for Friedrichshafen to take at least one set. If JW ended up winning this match 3-0, they had a great chance of taking the number one overall seed in the bracket, and, th- and they did. Yashemsky wins 3-0. Friedrichshafen choked massively in sets two and three. They led 23-20 in the second They led 23-21 in the third. I think they led like 15-12 in the first. Completely blew all three of those sets. It didn't end up mattering for Friedrichshafen, but the rest of Europe was rooting for them to at least take one set. They choked away opportunities. They couldn't do it. Yeah, Shemsky wins 3-0. They had a great chance to take the number one overall seed. All they needed after that was for Trentino to not sweep Zaxa. And we'll get to that later. Going on about the same time, Zirat Bancasa Ankara taking on Ljubljana. And this all this had to do was who gets second place in Pool E to make it out. And it was a banger. In Turkey, Ljubljana comes in, goes up 2-1, to one, but Zirat clutches it out. They take second place in Pool E in a, off a five-set win. They bring in Osmani Wantarena just in time. He's now official 
officially signed to Zirat Bank as they head into the Champions League playoffs. So Zirat advances as a second place team out of Pool A. Ljubljana is out. Montpellier, Montpellier beat Novi Sad. Nobody cares. Didn't matter. Berlin beat Xavierce, and not only did they beat him, they smacked him. The one thing that we weren't really predicting as we were talking about this with Eric Shoji and all, all the drama coming in, because this match had everything on the line, the only thing ever that we didn't really see coming was a three-dong. And that's exactly what we got. Berlin put on a clinic at home against Xavierce. Now, Xavierce didn't have their starting libero, no Santiago Danani, but this was a terrible, terrible showing from previously the first place ranked team in the plus Liga who because of this three set loss and because Hawk Bank Ankara had already won this pool Xavier Che was locked into third in the pool they were in significant danger of missing the playoffs entirely because of how badly they played against Berlin not only losing but losing three sets so we'll get to that one later um, next up was Tours versus Benfica in pool C that was basically a, a, a match that Tours had to win to put themselves in position to, to get second or maybe third, in which case they could have had a case to get in over Xavier Che, but they beat him. They beat Benfica, no problem. And after doing so, Tours versus Xavier Che head to head at that point came down to set ratio, 12 and 10 for Tours, 12 and 11 for Xavier Che. So Tours had them by one set, but it didn't actually end up coming down to that because all the drama of all of all the matches to really have all the drama, it was one that we didn't expect. Lube Chivadinova versus Nak Rusolare. And this the all all the drama was with this one. Nak Rusolare in pool C, if they had beaten Lube Chivadinova in any number of sets, they would have gotten second in that pool, Tours would have gotten third in that pool, and Tours would have beaten out Xavierce in the third place ranking. If Rusolare had beaten Lube, Rusolare is in. Tours is in, Xavier Che's out. But after a crazy match, and all the credit to Rusolari for pushing Lube Chivadin over to five, Lube at home does eventually get it done. Something like 15 to 9 or 10 in the fifth. It wasn't all that close in the fifth, but uh, lots of drama in the set. Too close. That. But definitely too close for Lube, and way too close if you were a Xavier Che fan rooting for Lube to end up winning that match. So they did. Uh, Rusolari, as close as they came, they are out. Tours and Xavier Che are in. Last couple games. Perugia played the bench. We were wondering if teams were going to play the bench in this week. Perugia chose to play the bench against Durin. They lost the first set with no Gianelli, no Leon, no Colacci, no Soleil. They played mostly the bench, ended up winning in four, didn't really matter. Carlo Varsco beat Menon, didn't matter. Last match that mattered was a big one. The rematch of the last two Champions League finals. Trentino versus Zaxa. And to go back to kind of what I was saying earlier, Yashemsky Vengil, who beat Friedrichshaf in 3-0, they had the inside track to the one seed in the bracket. Trentino had to win 3-0. If Trentino had beaten Zaxa 3-0, they would have jumped over Yashemsky to take the number one overall seed in the bracket. So Trentino played the starters on the road in Poland in front of a great crowd. Trentino played the starters, and they got smoked. First two sets, not even close. Zaxa with Bartosz Bednors looked awesome. Completely took it to Trentino. Down two sets to none. Trentino at that point, even after losing the first set, Trentino at that point had no chance to overtake Jaszczemski for the number one overall seed. And now we got to look at the bracket because this is where the seeding really came into play. You see Jaszczemski there at the very, very bottom, the number one seed. They take on the winner of Tours and Friedrichshafen. Uh, after that, and hypothetically the semifinals, Yashimsky gets the winner of Hawk Bank, Ankara, and Lube Chivadinova, which is going to be a really good series. But because Trentino ended up keeping the starters in, even after dropping the first set to Zaxa, they kept the starters in. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get the yep. one seed, but they kept the starters in. They brought it all the way back to win in a reverse sweep. That hurt Trentino badly. If Trentino had just lost the match... If, if after they had no longer anything to play for, if they had lost the match after losing that first set, put in the bench, lost the match, they would be in Lube Chivadinova's spot, playing Hulk Bank Ankara and then probably uh, Shemsky in the semifinals. Instead, because Trentino made a huge comeback, putting all that effort and all that intensity mm -hmm. into their starters, because they made that comeback, Trentino has a significantly worse bracket drop. It was the worst thing they could have possibly done to win that match. As soon as they lost the first set, Trentino should have known the situation, 
pull the starters, save the guys. You've got a lot of matches to win in Italy. You've got a lot of matches to win in Champions League. Instead, they expend all the possible energy winning in a reverse sweep and killing themselves in the bracket because of it. So now we have this. This is the Champions League bracket. It is official. The play-in rounds of the playoffs, Tours versus Friedrichshafen in a two-match series, Berlin versus Zirat Bank in a two-match series, and a huge one in, in Poland, Zaksa versus Zabierce in a two-match series. Winner of that one takes on Trentino. Winner of Berlin versus Zirat Bank takes on Perugia. Winner of Tours versus Friedrichshafen takes on Yashimski. So Trentino now has a very difficult quarterfinal matchup, regardless of which Polish team wins. And then if they survive that, they almost definitely get Perugia. Worst possible draw Trentino could have gotten, and it was totally within their control to put themselves in a better spot. But that was it. That was the drama. So Trentino... That's it, eh? <laughs> Trentino <laughs> Ten minutes later, himself. that's it. Trentino puts themselves in a bad spot by making a bad choice. Rusolare narrowly advances, missing out on the playoffs. Xavierce advances by the skin of their teeth. Everything else kind of fell in the way we expected it to. And already, this bracket play starts next week. All right. Well, you discussed it all, so don't really, don't really need to go into it, into into it that much. Yeah, th- there it is. Um, there's the bracket. Um, yeah, we'll work on getting that one under a minute. Uh, Ten minutes later. Um, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, though, it was it. it was a sweet day. Yeah, it, it, it was. Thanks it for, was a really cool day. Th- thanks for breaking it down like that. All right. I guess we move on. Sure. Uh, the, the other thing that we should point out about Champions League as we segue to the CEV Cup is that, the, as we've talked about the last couple of weeks, the other teams that got third place in their pools in Champions League, so everybody but uh, Xavierce who advanced, so Montpellier, Roussillare, Carlo Varsco, and Ljubljana, their European season isn't over. They actually dropped down to play the CEV Cup. So here's the bracket here with the CEV Cup with those four teams that dropped down. And the other series also wrapped up on Wednesday. So we saw Scra win. We saw Masaic win in a golden set. We saw Piacenza drop a set to a Romanian team, but they advanced. And then unfortunately, Everett, the dream is over. Lundberg couldn't quite get it done on the road against Modena, losing 3-1, to one, and Modena advances. Yeah, no, too bad for the Lundberg boys. Would have been nice to see them advance. Would have been nice to watch the game, but we couldn't. No. Oh. Um, all shut down there by have, the CEV. We have a lot of gripes about the CEV and broadcasting and media here lately, and this was just the worst thing. How can you, how how can you not broadcast this game? How can you not broadcast this game? Don't know. Not entirely sure. Brutal. So final eight of the CEV Cup is set for what it's worth. Uh, I mean, I, I I I would be shocked if it wasn't Modena versus Piacenza in the final, and that would actually be pretty fun. Yeah, two struggling teams out of out of Italy going to duke it out for a uh, medal that they may not deserve. But then again, I don't know. I see one of them losing. Um, they're both messed up along the way many times. I mean, Piacenza lose everyone in Italy. And Mona saw lots of tools last year, right? So anything could happen. I think in this right. very round, if I remember. So yeah, Modena Ljubljana is one matchup. Uh, Carlo Varsco versus Scra, Roussillare versus Masaic, and all Belgian series. And then uh, Montpellier versus Piacenza. That's the final eight of CEV Cup on the men's side. Cool. Great. Okay. You, you, want, you want to stick in Europe and talk about women's? Oh, I just lost Everett. <laughs> Bye, Everett. I hope he, I hope he comes back soon. Uh, maybe he's... I don't know. I, I, I carried that CEV segment, so I guess he's out of here. We'll, we'll wait for Everett to rejoin, but I'll get things talk, started talking about the CEV Champions League on the women's side. Uh, so Champions League on the women's side is a couple weeks behind. They've got uh, a few weeks to make up with. Hey, Everett, welcome back, buddy. Yeah, sorry. I have no idea. Or I do know happened. I just accidentally clicked a wrong, I know one of my tabs on my computer and brought myself out of the player. Good job. Well, w- welcome back. Uh, I was just starting to talk about women's Champions League. So week five mm-hmm. going underway this week. Cool. Uh, you have all, all the notes for that one, too. You want to take the whole thing away with that uh, as well? No, uh, please, please chime in. We, we, we talked about this. We talked about it. I was going to I was going to ramble for a little bit. Sometimes yeah. it happens. R- ramble, not 15 minutes and take everything. But we can talk about that one later. Uh, yeah, I mean, not much to say about uh, week number five uh, here, at the women's Champions League. Um I mean, there was the head scratcher of the match of the week. Oh, there. can we talk uh, about that? Oh yeah, you, you, absolutely. I know that you want to get yourself off your chest, and so it's, so go for it. So, well, so there are five matches today. There are uh, five matches tomorrow and Thursday. There were no surprises today. Uh, 
yeah, nothing, nothing to talk about today. Novara beat Potsdam. Okay, great. Rest of the matches this week, uh, there's five more. None of them are particularly good. These are all rematches from week one. But the super match of the week, like the featured match of this week, is Chemik Police versus Maritza Plovdiv of Bulgaria. Everett, there are a lot of things wrong with this. Step thing, thing number one, Maritza Plovdiv just had a super match of the week two weeks ago. We don't, unless you're like a championship contender, the CEV doesn't give that that featured spotlight. Like that, that's really the only thing that that means. That's the one game that gets a commentator of the games of those pool play. Like of the ten games, only one gets a commentator in pool play, and that's the one. Why is Plovdiv getting two matches with a commentator? Especially because the last time they were on the featured match of the week, they put up the most embarrassing performance maybe in Champions League history, losing a set to Zajabash's bench. 25 to 5. And there's there's so many there's so many better games to be oh looking at like Lodge I think is going to be a great one. I mean Potsdam versus Novara like we saw Potsdam just beat Vakif Bank maybe right. put up some something against Novara like we saw Valero Lucana beat um Volley Mal- Milano they're taking I know they're taking out Blage but like still like that's a has a good good possible match but woods versus stuttgart a, tomorrow is a good game why yeah, are it's going to be a good up? game for sure no idea why we're why we're giving 25 to 5 but like we know we know the reasons and it's not even the typical money reasons it's the boomers in the trench coach who can't who can't figure it out reasons but like that's that's I that's why i don't understand of, of all the teams to like pick randomly out of a hat to give another featured match a bulgarian team it's like the, there's not even any rhyme or reason behind it it's just like that, that, that's yeah, because has, has Kemic has Kemic have had a uh, uh, a match of the week match yet? Maybe not, but they fired their coach. They've had a bad year. Like there, there's all sorts of weirdness going on. They're in a Zajabasha's pool. They're probably going to get second, but like they have they have they have no chance of of doing any damage. Yeah, no. But really, I mean... the thing is, Plovdiv like that 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 performance they put up against the Zajabasha's bench, losing twenty five to five, was so embarrassing that none of the three teams on social media even posted the result. The CEV in their super match of the week didn't even post the result. Neither I mean, did Zajabasha, neither did Plovdiv, because it was so embarrassing they didn't even want to publicize that a team scored five points in a set in Champions League, and here they are again forcing some poor commentator. I have no idea who it's going to be tomorrow, but I don't envy them having to try and fake their way through a Plovdiv match and get excited about it. At least it'll be an hour and a shower. That you know, it really sucks to not have the Stuttgart versus Lodge match because that's a big match between the top two teams of the pool with Fenerbahce on their heels. So you're gonna have one team. The, whoever wins this match will be the leader heading into the last week. So yeah, it's a it's it's a real shame. Other than that, I mean, when you're looking at results from today, they're all very very standard. Milanza taking beats Pomate uh, out of the Czech. Rejov taking a Mulhouse from France. Canigliano over Budapest. Um, Vakif Bank over Belgrade. Um, is that Serbia? I believe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Novara 3-1 over Potsdam. That one had a bit of potential to be something good, but uh, unfortunately Potsdam couldn't recreate that magic of beating Vakif Bank last week. That's a tall tale to be able to take down Vakif Bank. Uh, and then uh, Novara after that. Um, and then there's there's a few more matches tomorrow. You got Lekana against Blaj. We said that Stuttgart versus Lodz uh, match. Uh, Fenerbahce taking on La Laguna and tenor, out of Tenerife. And, of course, the aforementioned uh, match of the day as well with uh, Plovdiv <laughs> taking on Kemic. Oh, and then Exazabasha taking on Kagoviste out of Romania. So still a bunch of uh, matches to watch if you want to go ahead check those out on Eurovolley.tv. And there's actually a few matches uh, available over on YouTube as well. Well, the match of the day one will be. Right. So the, looking at the pools for Women's Champions League, there's actually not a whole lot of drama uh, like Caneliano is going to win their pool. Malone's is going to win their pool. It's Zajabash is going to win their pool where the intrigue comes in is group D, which is the Wood Stuttgart Fenerbahce pool. That one's going to be really interesting. And tomorrow's match will have a lot to do with that. And then Vakif Bank Novara's pool uh, could be interesting because of Vakif Bank's loss to Potsdam. If Novara can beat Vakif Bank next week, then that one gets interesting. But, uh, it's just not not the level of drama that I think the week six on the women's side is shaping up for next week. The same way as the men's, it's just not quite as competitive of a tournament like Team One through Twenty. 
No, it's not. But the the top end will be really good once we get into the final four, even, even in the quarterfinals too, with the Italian teams taking on the Turkish teams. And that's pretty much it other than maybe police, the Chemic Police. Yeah. All right. Uh, we we haven't really talked about CEV Cup women's at all this year because there hasn't really been anything good to talk about. But now I think they're in the, I think they're at the, like kind of the eighth finals. I think there's, yeah, so there's there's 16 teams left. And so we'll have eight that advance. No, my bad. There's eight teams left. Plus, we're going to get four that drop down from the Champions League third place teams the same way as the men's. But there, we're finally getting some good series in CEV Cup on the women's side. THY Istanbul versus Busto Arsizio is actually kind of a cool series. I think that's the first one of CEV Cup women's that I've really had on my radar. And I'm actually excited to watch that. If there's going to be a stream, I have no idea if there is. Well, I mean, I, there'll probably be a stream in uh, in for when the match is in Turkey because I'm sure TRT will take that one and it'll be somewhere on YouTube if you can find it. There probably won't be a stream for um, Italy because Ray won't step up and, and take the costs and obviously neither will Volleyball World because it's not one of their events. So you're probably going to be able to get the good old um, Modena versus Lundberg uh, situation where you can only watch one leg uh, of that one, which you know is a little bit garbage i do expect thy to take that one though like thy is a top f- five or four team like they're the fourth team in in uh in turkey and they push the best teams like they just went to five with exhaust like busto isn't pushing canigliano anytime soon no. they're fighting for they're fighting for a playoff spot right so even though busto is typically a top five team and typically this would kind of be like that the one of the, like the four or five spots busto isn't one of those teams this year yeah, so good point. Uh, I would I would expect Kira Van Rijk and Emily and Emily Magno uh, to uh, and the rest of the the THY team to take that one pretty easily. I would say. So that one is tomorrow first leg, and then next week. I actually think next Tuesday uh, is the second leg. So we'll see if anything interesting nope. comes out of that. Other otherwise, not much for CV Cup women's. Berkai is saying in the chat that he hasn't seen any st- streaming for it sadly, but he's going to check. He's going to check uh, TRT okay. Sport. All right, we had to, I, we, I know some questions earlier. Uh, I, I brought up that Osmani Wantarena to Zirat Bank Ankara is confirmed. Also, Thomas Jeschke to Hulk Bank Ankara also confirmed. So we kind of knew about these a couple weeks ago, but finally, just this week, the clubs actually announced them. So two potential difference makers in Champions League. But Everett, I kind of wanted to ask, is Osmani Wantarena at this point in his career really a difference maker? In Turkey, yes. Yeah. How about like is, how about is, Champions is, League though? I mean, not to p- compete against Perugia, or realistically, I mean, yeah, maybe in 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 certain situations. It will really to see like we don't know what he looks like, right? We don't know how how good he is. We haven't True. seen him play since last year, um, and he played sparingly, if that. Like he was injured for most of it. So yeah, well, we'll have to see how how he plays. I don't think he's able to 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 move the needle i do think thomas jaschke is able to move the needle for for halpike ankara having him and bruno on the left side plus namir you're you've given like a legitimate a legitimate cannon on the left side plus you have bruno who's what looks like to be the heart and soul of that team the way he's he's played and he he emotionally runs that team you have namir who everyone knows can be like a 20 to 30 point guy on any given night one of the most lethal score scores in the game and a guy who I'd probably call a top 15 setter in the world and is one of the most fun guys to watch volleyball in my Kamaa. So yeah, this Hulk bake team is dangerous with the addition of, of Thomas Jaschke and Osmani Wantahena. I don't really think he moves the needle that much for Zerat Benkazi. I mean, this is a team that just went to five with Ljubljana out of Slovenia. So I don't really, yeah, at home as well. Like that's a, just an up and down team. And I don't see Osmani having the, the longevity. I think he really helps them in Turkey. I think he helps them in the Turkish playoffs. And I think he helps them solidis- solidify a CEV spot for next year, potentially. But I don't think he moves the needle for them in Champions League. I think that's a pretty good take. I am kind of looking forward to that series with uh, Zirat Bank versus Berlin. I think that that could be kind of good with as streaky as we've seen Berlin be at times this year. But uh, the, the way that they beat, the way that Berlin beat Xavierce last week was very, very impressive. And if they play like that, uh, they'll they'll get past Zirat Bank no problem to then earn the high honor of getting smoked by Perugia in the quarterfinals. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sure, Xavierce didn't have Danani, but. We've already talked about that, so we can move on now to um, um, let's 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 move on to the ad. 
Yeah, uh, good call. So uh, Everett's got the sweatshirt. I've got the shirt. Uh, lots of great stuff available on that volleyball dot store. And Everett, we've still got the promo code, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Use the code SPICY for fifteen percent off of your entire order. Um, I've seen not obviously. I've seen there's been a number of you who have taken advantage of this. So thank you. Once you do. Just shoot us a little bit of Instagram, you know, whether it's a story, whether it's a post, tag us, tag the 9 by 9 We'd love to see it. Share it. Share it in the Discord. If you're not already a member, you absolutely need to be. Um, and, yeah, make sure you head over to that volleyball.store uh, to pick up all of your 9 by 9 and your spicy volleyball merch. There's some great stuff on there. So, yeah, the promo code will not last for long, but we're still uh, celebra- celebrating 10,000 YouTube subscribers and 1,000 Discord members. So uh, you get the code SPICY for uh, a little while longer. So take advantage while you got it. All right, where to next, Everett? You want to go to Italy? Yeah, let's go to Italy, man, where it wasn't as crazy of a week. Um, there was a few fun little matches. First and foremost, we need to talk about Siena versus Padova. Now, Siena was in a two-game win streak, the first time all season that they had been able to win uh, two in a row. And they were able to make it three in a row, a row with the reverse sweep over Padova. 28 points um, for uh, Martin Van Garderen in, in this one. He has 69 points. Don't laugh. 69 points in the past three games um, for, for Siena. They're three and zero in that time span. He only has six, 151 points in the season, right? So he's scoring over 30 percent, like over a third of his points in the past three games for Siena. It's been absolutely massive as they had Julio Penali uh, get knocked out, but they did have Xavier Bartman come in, um, so that was awesome. Or to, to see Siena, and that makes things so interesting because with that win by Siena, it pulls them out of the basement, and Toronto was super, super close to being able to make it even more interesting, taking uh, Piacenza to five, but fortunately enough for Piacenza and their fans, they were able to pull it out in five, but still, that relegation race is going to be crazy at the bottom. Only one point separates Padova um, from Toronto, but then if you just go up, only nine points separates Chisterna in ninth, the team that started the season almost perfectly and was surprising us all. They've been terrible of late. Um, they're, they've fallen all the way down to ninth, losing um, two in a row last week to Siena, this week to Modena. That's pretty crazy. Uh, we talked about that uh, Tarot versus Lube game uh, a little bit. First and foremost, Lube win list. In 2023, in the Super Lega, and this one uh, is, or sorry, I don't know why I said um, I, I said Toronto versus Piacenza. In the yeah. Toronto versus Piacenza match, Ibrahim Lawani in his debut scored 28 points in the loss. That's absolutely massive. But in the Lube versus Verona match, Nomuri Keita dropped 29 points. Finally, on playing on the left side, Stoichev's on the, on finally right listened side. to us on the right side. On the, on the, on the right side, you're right. Finally on the right side. Interesting enough, though, they use Magalini and not Gord Perrin on the left side. So wondering wondering that why that was happening. But still, Lube winless in the Super Lega in 2023. So that one was a tough one to watch if you're a Lube fan because this is a team that was sitting right up there. This is the team that is the only team to have taken Perugia to five sets. And they have are winless so far, 0-4 in, in 2023. So that's going to be a team to watch. Um, other than that, pretty much standard across the board. Trentino stomped Monza. Yeah. Modena just dealt dealt with just turn nice and easy. They made, made, just turned and made things interesting late, but they pulled away. Lugumju was really good in the MVP in that one. And of course, we don't even need to talk about Perugia just dismantling Milano. They've already got the one seed locked up, and they're still out here destroying teams. Yeah, the the, the Siena match is, is it's weird that we're talking about Siena so much in the last couple shows. But seriously, what if if Martin Van Garderen had played like this, like at least like for Modena last year? Remember that series? That would have been a much di- would have been a or, much different scenario for Martin for Van Garderen or for, or the or Netherlands for or, I mean, what man? Where did this guy come up with? almost 70 points in three matches that's completely insane if you were playing in the nfl and, and had and had a run of games like this he would definitely be getting randomly drug tested because there's 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 something up with that uh 
but good for him. It's unbelievable. He's doing it on extremely high efficiency. He's passing the ball great. It's just like not the type of player that we expected him to be. But boy, was it fun after all these years to watch as a big DF Bart. He didn't start. He came in off the bench in the first as uh, Federico Pereira didn't play very well. 16 points, for, Yeah, 16 for 34 for the old man with only one error. Pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. He did kind of taper off a little bit uh, later on the match. He came on, brought that spark in. And, you know, like that's going to happen. The new signing comes on. He's going to spark the boys. But, it, man, it, 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 it got to the point when you were watching that match when Van Gardner was almost automatic on the outside. It was it was a lot of fun to watch. So, yeah, hats off to them because they have just been outstanding. And I mean, this relegation battle is is by n- in no means like done in any way shape or form, but still, it's been fun to watch and uh, I I who do they, who do they take on next week? Oh, they're taking on Modena. So Modena has been struggling. That's going that one's going to be fun to watch. But over take on Milan and then Toronto is up against Trentino. Oh, Trentino. Okay. Yeah. So it's three potential three potential losses for the relegation teams, but we'll, we'll have to see. Other than that, I mean, I think Trentino stomping Monzo the way they did was a huge, like, uh, a huge statement match for Trentino to stop themselves on on a bit of a iffy play. I mean, they did come back from behind from from winning that uh, that game against Zaxa, but, I mean, it didn't look... It, it wasn't particularly convincing the, right. the way they did it, especially with the, how they played in the first two sets, but yeah, uh, other than that, Monza losing to Trentino. We we talked about that. How about how about Daniele Lavia, seventeen for twenty five with no errors. He was automatic. I mean, like they 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 crushed them. Monza wasn't a factor until the third set, right? right. And it, it really like Monza was going to be able to to uh, take that third set. They were leading pretty late, and uh, they were able to to turn things around. But um, yeah, Trentino. Just absolutely dominant, and when Trentino's good, they are really good. They, yeah. they're, they're the only team. They're the only. I think I still think that they're the second best team in Italy, and I think they're one of the only teams, maybe in Europe this year, that can truly compete with Perugia. Yeah, I don't think they can beat him in a five match series, but no. in like a two match series, like maybe the Champions League semifinal, which is where they are in the bracket, just like last year, I could maybe see it. If if Trentino is playing at their top level, you're right. It's really it's 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 like a beautiful style of volleyball to watch when when they're really clicking nicely. You want to talk about Verona versus Lube a little bit more because I I'm I'm interested in what's going on. Well, I've always been interested in what's going on inside Radice and Stoichev's head. I've never been able to figure that out exactly but they put namori Keita on the right side and then they promptly give him 50 balls 25 yeah, he, for 50 because he can take that type of load he he loves a lot of load i remember he's coming from korea he was getting 60 to 70 sets a game in korea Great this is point. standard for Nam- namori Keita. like he probably felt like he wasn't getting en- enough on the left side when, when he was playing there like to me it's it's what I really like seeing is is kind of the buy in from the Rock Mozic because this is a dude who was at the top of the scoring the scoring title last year and this game he only comes in with f- f- uh, fourteen points but you know who they gave it to in the clutch you know when they needed that match point in the fifth set who did they gave it to they gave it to the Rock Mozic and he had a great celebration jumped up onto the barriers celebrated with the fans because you know that's a big a big win for a team at the, the at the beginning of the season had such high hopes. Right, you had Shaposhkov who was just leading the league, and then they just kind of died. And finally, Stoichev moved Namori Kato on onto the right side. What they really need to have is is bring Gord Perrin in on the left side. I think that will just make them that much better. I don't know if he's injured still or, or what's going on, but Magalini is is all right. But I don't think he can get the job done against against a non a non Lube team. That is, to be honest, struggling right now. Man. Just can't, just, just can't, just can't figure it out, right? They so, are I mean, you, you, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull from my boy Gord Perrin uh, to be out there, but I think just experience wise, how good he is in serve receive, I think he can be an asset to that team. And I think if they run with that, this is a team that could potentially do some damage. So let's look at the standings again because it is as ridiculous as we may have ever seen it. Again, it's eight teams between spots two through nine for seven spots in the playoffs and then the relegation race. I mean, that, that's what the, the, really the drama is going to come down to. I mean, Chisterno's in ninth based on 
Uh, they have the same number of points, but one less match win than Milano. There are two teams at 23 points, two teams at 24 points, then two teams at 27 points. Like, Chisterna is out of the playoffs right now. They're two games away from being in fourth place in the league. Like, that's how ridiculous this is. And Verona right there, uh, currently sixth on tiebreakers, is right, is right in the mix. But, I mean, every game, every week in this league, there's going to be so much movement. And you got to keep in mind, it's not just about making the playoffs. You do not want to be the eight seed. Milano right now is in that death, instant death position of the eight seed where they would have to play Perugia in the first round. I mean, you don't want to be the eight and you don't want to be the four or five. Right. Right. That's exactly right. it. Because if either way you have to play Milano or Perugia in the first round. And I mean, actually, you know what? Any of those teams, like Monza from Monza to Trentino, I think could win could 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 win a playoff series. I think Trentino, as I said, is the best second place team, and I think we're going to see that down the stretch. But other than that, from Modena to to Milano, even Chisterna in there, like that Chisterna versus Modena match was was pretty good. Once was just once Chisterna started going, and and Durlich was swinging away on the on the uh, on the right side, it it was a good one, and they were pushing up to a certain extent in, in the fourth set. But still, uh, those ones to me, from Modena, Modena all the way down to Milano, are toss-ups. Yeah, they really are. And that first round of the playoffs is only a three, a best-of-three match series, and kind of anything can happen. If you get it to that third match, uh, who knows? Like, pressure sets in and crazy stuff can happen. But um, obviously, this is Perugia's league to lose, and they will take very quick care of whoever they end up playing in the first round at the eighth seed. Uh, so yeah, coming up this weekend, Perugia versus Piacenza, meh. Monza versus Verona is like low key the best game of the weekend. I mean, yeah. I think it will be too. It was in the first round uh, as well. It was, it was a really good matchup, but these are two teams who are kind of in the same spot, uh, and in the obviously in the same spot in the uh, the standings, both sitting uh, at twenty four points. Verona with a little bit of an edge with one with one more win, but these are two teams who are fighting to be almost like taken seriously, right? Mo Ver Verona had a fantastic uh, start to the season, have kind of leveled off since then. Monza had a terrible start to the season, have kind of leveled off since then. So this one's going to be really indicative. Of course, you got to know I'm going to go with Monza on this one, just a little bit more Canadian flavor on the Monza <laughs> side. Uh, which, 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 by the way, I would like to give a shout, shout out to Ronnie Cuban Spike, who loves calling uh, our Canadians wannabes in the, the chat. Uh, whereas you can find two Canadians in the top 20 of scoring and no Cubans. The highest Cuban is like, what, 29th, Ronnie? So go take a hike. Sorry, I my just had to get, favorite, get that one off the chest. My, my favorite chest. rivalry ever is you versus Ronnie Cuban Spike, just like talking trash about the players from your respective countries. And, there, was a, there was a great argument in the Discord I saw the other day. It was awesome oh, to watch. I, I, I was teeing off on uh, on Ronnie <laughs> and Burkai. Burkai, you know what? You know I love you too, out of Turkey, but I had a bit of a field day with them on Sunday. It was honestly, it might have been one of my best chirping days on the Discord ever. So 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 that was a lot, a lot of fun. In all honesty, I love Ronnie. I think he, what he brings to our community is, is like it, it has no comparison. So I just like poking the bear sometimes, just like he pokes likes poking everyone else. It's just you have to keep the balance. That's right. Ronnie is just the best. I, I really like seeing new people come into the Discord and be confused by who this guy is. Like, is he actually this antagonistic, or is the uh, uh, the answer is yes? But it's hilarious, and we and we love Ronnie for that, especially when he uses the alt account on Discord. Even yeah. more funny. Der Ber Ber Berkay was chir per chirping me about how Turkey was going to be better, and I was like, buddy, you can't chirp me as long as you keep losing to Denmark. So once <laughs> once you start beating Denmark and actually make it into VNL. <laughs> Turkey can chirp a little bit more. Oh my goodness! It's like I summoned Jesus. Oh, there I he is! Spoke his name <laughs> and he shows up in the chat. There's Ronnie. <laughs> There's Ronnie. He'd hey, like Ronnie. Himself, Ronnie, you, you want to? Yeah, you want to join the show? And uh, the first thing you can do is thank yourself, and then we'll kick you off. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, if you oh. don't know what we're talking about, you're not in the Discord. You better join that thing. Uh, that's awesome, Ronnie. We love you. Okay. <laughs> I might put, you might put that on a T-shirt, Ronnie. We love you. Oh man! Or, what, uh, what was it? Um, Venezuelan. What did what did Beanbug? Write? Venezuelan. Uh, I I don't remember something about Venezuelan dig instead of Cuban. Oh story. yeah, that was great. <laughs> yeah, join the Discord. It's 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 the best. All right, uh, you want to talk about Poland, Everett? I think I think there's some catching up to do in the Plus League and some other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to start 
with the latest news out of Scraw. Like that to me is 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 the biggest news out of Scraw because I think we should just jump jump Do straight it. to that. Yeah, absolutely. Scraw Belchatov finally has been uh, decided to uh, drop their coach. Um, why am I blanking on his name right now? Uh, Joel was, Banks, British Joel, guy. Joel Banks, British guy. I mean, I mean that should say enough. Britain's not too great at volleyball, and you're sending your best quote unquote spec coach to coach one of the best teams in the league. But Scraw is. I mean, I remember at one point earlier this season, like, oh man, Scraw might miss out on the Polish Cup, and it was like the top six teams qualified for the Polish Cup. Scraw might not even make the playoffs. Scra right. is in eleventh. In eleventh, that's like um, if Manchester United wasn't in like is you know wasn't one of the top teams in in the Premier League. Like, what is going on with this? Scra has been absolutely brutal. Dick Coy has been terrible. Their only Awful. best, like Antanasievich, who was supposed to be the guy, is old and injured. So I don't know. Like he was old and injured when he played for Perugia. I don't know why Scra would pick him up and think that he's going to be the savior out, out here. The only bright spot for this team is been Matus Bionek and someone, someone please free Bionek from the like one oh. of the worst situations in Poland right now because they look bad. They look seriously bad. Horrible. Dick Coy coming in off the bench, getting three donged by a Ukrainian team, goes 0 for 8 attacking with five errors. What are we doing? What are we doing? I, every, I, th- I think we should bestow uh, the, the, the Figure It Out Award of the Week sponsored by Figure Ver- it out. Sponsored by Vero Volley Malonza. The Figure It Out of Award of the Week <laughs> goes to goes to Skra Belkatov this week. Figure it oh. out, you guys. They fired their coach. Maybe they maybe they're taking the first steps. Uh, the first step is 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 you know admitting you have a problem, right, Everett? The first step is taking a look in the mirror, realizing that you have a British guy coaching a team of geriatrics, and maybe that's not going to work. This is one of the most proud franchises on all of volleyball anywhere. They had Marius Flazwi just like carrying them deep in playoff runs for years and years and years and they're sitting in 11th getting 3 would by a by a ukrainian team and mm. like putting all these 45 year olds out on the floor figure it out so yeah. scra gets the figure it out award of the week sponsored by vera volley malonza who also to talk about it to talk about another polish team that's also struggling we talked about zavierce getting three donged in the yes. champions league they got three donged by katowice as well not to mention katowice is bad and they've just like their best player, Thomas Rousseau, just left them to go play for. Uh, he's he's probably going to be joining Modena. That's that's what right. it looks like from right. from social media. So Zavierci went from at one point being the top of the table in the in the Plus Liga, looking like they were going to be the team from from Poland to compete with, um, to just dropping all of a sudden, drop getting three donged in bad fashion by Berlin, and then this is even worse against uh, Katowice. Katowice is bad. They're 14th in the league out of 16 teams. Like, if it weren't for Bielsko Biała, they would be a relegation candidate. And that, that is not good for a team that's, that should be as good as Zavierce is. So, uh, a lot of teams in the Plus Liga that need to figure it out. Uh, one, did, Everett, did you hear about this? Charney Radom has made a transfer move, and it is none other than sending Uncle Mo away. No, I didn't hear about this. They got you, rid you, of Uncle Mo. You know where Uncle Mo is going for the rest of the year? Where he's going to Rasovia. Explain. Like, I don't know. Why would Rasovia want Uncle Mo? Why? I mean, why maybe have... to add some depth on the left side. Like they want to. They want to make a deep run in the Plus Liga playoffs because they're not in any European competition. So they just. I don't. That but, that but one Uncle doesn't really. Mo. Like Uncle Mo is not good. I, I mean, I I think that Thibaut Rosard is hurt. So at least you have somebody behind DeFalco and Chibul, but. Not Uncle Mo. I mean, we, we've we've been laughing at Uncle Mo for years, and for good reason. All he does everywhere he goes is get relegated. Oh, this is true. He does have that. I mean, Rome is was well at the bottom of the relegation race, but now he's playing for Rosovia, one of the top teams in the league. Actually, the top the team best in the league. And I mean, the <laughs> you know what? At the end of the day, I don't hate this move um, because. You just need someone to kind of solidify the serve receive. And that's exactly what Uncle Mo is good at doing, right? He's good at passing. If there's if there's one thing that that the well, let's give Uncle Mo is that he's good at passing. I mean, I don't think he can jump over the height of a ball, but he's good, <laughs> he's good at passing, right? And with with a team like Rosovia, with you have when you have T, uh, TJ TJ DeFalco playing the way he is. I think you could kind of just need to let let him swing away and have someone be solid 
and not disrupt the team order a little bit uh, like too much you know what i mean yeah. so the, the chat's backing us up here uh, somebody somebody is saying that Thibault Rossard is hurt, so they're bringing in Uncle Mo to be their third guy behind DeFalco and Chabel, and I don't think we're going to see Uncle Mo on the court that much, but if he were to see playing time, I think, you're right, reception is probably his only value. It's just really funny for a guy who we make fun of all the time, uh, going from bad team to bad team to bad team, like all of a sudden with, uh, what do they have, eight matches left in the year in Poland, going into the best team in the league. That just came out of nowhere. You know what? Volleybox has... Mauricio Borges, otherwise known as Uncle Mo, as a top 100 player. Volleybox's individual rankings make absolutely no sense. And I, I don't care that Uncle Mo has an Olympic gold medal, but all yeah. he does is get relegated, at least lately, at least lately. No, but I'm, I mean, I think he makes practices better. He provides that provides that stability off the bench behind Chebul. And you know what? A little bit of depth goes a long way in a long plus Liga season that has going to have a long playoffs as well. Speaking of Rosovia, one of the best matches of the year in the Plus Liga was Zaxa, the defending champions, uh, really starting to come into form. Bartosz Bednor shows up. Zaxa beats Rosovia, and they beat him in four for full points. So that puts a lot of traffic up at the top of the standing. Let's look at that again. Rosovia, 53. Ashemski 52. Zavierce, 48. Zaxa, 46. Any of those teams still very much alive for the one seed in the playoffs. I mean, rosovia has got the inside track, but um, when we get to the semifinals in the Plus Liga playoffs, if it happens to be these four teams, those are going to be some really good series. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any of those top four teams are awesome, and they've all held first place at, at one point or another, right? right. I think there's a massive drop, drop off there after Varsova um, to, uh, or from Zaxa, but still, any of those top teams, I think, are, are going to be fantastic, and it's going to be very fun to see which ones get those top spots because, of course, that's going to impact um, Champions League moving forward. Those top three teams are going to be headed to Champions League uh, next year, and that's a spot that Varsovia would love to be in. Yeah, it's about time we get Rosovia back in Champions League. So uh, they've got, they've got, I mean, really, it's all in their control at this point. Uh, another Plus Liga transfer, uh, Gdansk, who just lost 3-0 to Yashemsky. They're picking up Zhang Jinyin, the Chinese outside hitter who was their only good player this past summer. I remember there was a, there was a time when he was rumored to go to Modena and be kind of their, their fourth outside hitter on the bench at the beginning of the year. Uh, I assume he played at home in the Chinese League. Uh, but it's been confirmed by the club that Zhang Jinyin's go to good dance because kind of be a backup outside hitter. And I kind of like that because they've got this uh, Mikawai Savitsky character who's a little bigger. And then Jan Martinez, the Argentinian guy, who's basically a second libero. So if you need a more of a scoring presence, that's actually a kind of a decent option. So another transfer related to the Plus Liga very late in the year. <laughs> and Uncle Mo was the MVP of the Brazil League right before he went to Vibo. And then yeah, what happened okay. when he went to Vibo? <laughs> yeah, he, he got relegated. I mean, relegated. I do think we hate on that Vibo team uh, a little bit much. But uh, two things I want to mention. First of all, Ozzy's tragic are coming through in the chat. Varshava on a five-win game, uh, five five-game win streak. So Good call. that's pretty, that's really pretty massive for them. And then also, uh, starting today uh, and also happening tomorrow is the uh, Polish Cup. So JW uh, and uh, Zavierci, because they were the, the leaders at the end of the first half of the season, got to play two teams from the Torin Liga. It was a 3-1 win against Bedzin for Zavierci and then a 2-3 donger for uh, JW. They did, did get pushed a little bit, 25-22, or 26-24, and 25-23 against Arca Kelm. Um, which is another one of the uh, League Two teams. And then tomorrow, uh, hap happening for the Polish Cup, you got Zaxa taking on Gdansk and Rostovia taking on Shubai. Both pretty good games. I mean, Zaxa just lost to Gdansk like a week ago. We talked to Eric Shoji about that when we were in Austin. And then Rostovia versus... Su now, Suvalki hasn't been nearly as good since they were to get this top six spot. Uh, where are they now? They might not even be in the top eight anymore. Uh, let's see. Yeah, all the way down to 10th. So they've, they've been slipping. I expect Rosovia to win that one, but I, I will definitely be tuning into Zaxa versus Gdansk. That game is going to be good. So uh, two more spots left in the final four of the Polish Cup. Kind of an interesting tournament because they play in between both the divisions like that. Yeah, to be honest, by looking at the Shvalki, um, uh roster, it's surprising to me. 
that they were doing as as well as 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 they were doing earlier in the season. Like they have Matias Sanchez, sure, Miran Kuzunjic, uh, of out of Serbia, and other than that, just Polish dudes. And nothing yeah. against Pol- nothing against Polish dudes. Obviously, they're some of the best volleyball players in the world, but just nothing that really moves the needle needle for me. And it's, it's not surprising that they've fallen all the way out of the playoff race. Yeah, agreed. Uh, another transfer rumor, Ozzy's bringing up in the chat. There's so this is the time of the year, especially in Poland, where there starts to be a ton of transfer rumors for next year. And I think Everett, if if you agree with this, I don't think we should really talk about them until the club off season. I really yeah, don't no. like. I really don't like how with with still like two months left in club season, maybe even three months for a lot of the teams, we're already or, talking about transfer rumors for next year. I don't really like that. Or if we're going to talk about it, let's do it in a separate forum from this. Like That's if we're going to talk about the rumor, let's just have a podcast where we casually talk about it and, and talk about what could be because there's just so much that could happen. I mean, I don't really want to get into it, but I saw uh, a a couple players going after Pacini recently about some maybe unethical reporting uh, Ooh, going on on on, in, on Instagram. Um, everybody's so favorite if, Italian insider. Absolutely. So I, yeah, I, like I think I love talking about the, the potential stuff, but let's do that in another forum. I think because uh, it's it's fun to discuss. Maybe we we call into Tommy and Monty and a few, and maybe Agatha as well because she's got her like finger on the pulse in terms of of what's going on for that stuff. So let's let's do it in a in a different way. I'd say. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I just don't like that this market is already happening while there's still lots and lots of volleyball to be played this year. I mean, we've we've complained about it before on the show, I think, but you're already trying to build your rosters for next year without knowing what your team is going to do to end the year. Maybe that's in the playoffs. Maybe that's pushing towards a championship. You're you, that's important data to consider what happens with the guys you have now as you build your team for next year, but you're already trying to scramble for pieces. I don't really like the the transfer calendar. It seems like Poland is the biggest problem. They're the ones that, that that's kind of start the shuffle in January of all times. I don't really like that very much. So we'll talk about yeah. it in a, in a different place. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's it's just a weird vibe. Like, I've absolutely, go ahead and re-sign your players for later years. Right, That, that right, should be right. a no-brainer. Yeah. But you shouldn't be going... And, you know, that whole situation last year of Agona knowing that she was going to play for uh, Vakuf Bank last year was, was, was just weird. You've already got those rumors about other players floating around. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's odd. Although I, I am liking this, like, mid-season transfer situation um, with Rosovia just going picking up. You know, like, you're a bottom, you're a bottom team. We're going to pick up one of your players. Yeah, absolutely. And we're just going to put them on our roster. Yeah. Now, if, like, transfers that, like, mid-season that happen immediately and affect teams this year, we'll absolutely talk about those. So I think we already covered all the recent ones. Yeah, Uncle Mo, Tomas Rousseau, Jean Jingyin, Osmani Wansarena, Thomas Jeschke. I think that that's all the big ones, right? Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, so a couple more things, Everett. I want to talk about this because it's going to be a very fun weekend uh, for the Volleyball League of America. I will be in sunny, beautiful San Diego. Uh, cannot wait. And the first of five weekends in a row of some form of VLA competition, uh, either like a Tier 1 regular season event or, in this case, a big old cup tournament. So 14 teams in the VLA going to San Diego this weekend. We did a big preview show last night on Around the VLA on the VLA channel. Going to be a really, really good tournament to get the kind of the West Division underway. And something that I think a lot of people that will like is the broadcast that we're doing. So we're going to have four courts going on all at the same time. What we're going to do is have we're going to have a dedicated stream for every one of them, but also we'll have one stream that starts at like 8 a.m. Pacific and runs literally all day nonstop where we'll be kind of switching between four cameras, one court at a time. Some I think we might have the technology to multi-screen, like bring two games in at a time perhaps. Kind of what Bounce House does, like that Bounce House broadcast for the Bundesliga, which is so awesome. We're going to be doing our version of that on the VLA channel. We're going to start it first thing in the morning, run it all day long, flip back and forth between courts, talk about what's happening, interview players, just a, a long, constant stream for everyone to fit, follow along with the West Division Cup tournament. So that's going to be cool. I encourage everyone to check it out uh, basically all day Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, it should be a fun one. My question, first and foremost, is where's Ruckus? Ruckus, all... re- Ruckus 
kind of rebranded. They're that team on the bottom there, this team NV out of Las Vegas because their owner or like their their main general manager moved to Vegas and wanted to start from from zero in terms of the standings. So in doing that, they kind of screwed up the seeds because the seeds go in order of cumulative points. And this team that this is basically the team that won this tournament last year. They're starting at zero points and they're getting way lower of a seed. Why would they why Probably would they want be. what what benefits them from starting with a lower seed? I don't really know. Do they want to move up to tier one? Uh, no, they don't. Otherwise, they would keep the points that they've got. So they're, they're chilling where they're at, and they're starting from zero points, which uh, they're, yeah, they're in pool D. They're probably going to win that pool. They could easily win the tournament, but the Rising Tide roster is really good. Uh, the Bay Area Dimes roster is really good. I think the Ascension roster is pretty good. There's, there's, there's going to be a lot of good players, a lot of good teams. And then I think of these teams, of the 14, four of them are brand new to the VLA, which is awesome. So they're going what to about Emiola, though? They were good last year, weren't they? They were, but yeah, they won the VLA Cup, but a lot of their kids are still in, in the NCAA. Like they had those, those three Pepperdine kids and a Northridge kid and, and then a kid that's overseas. So they, they're only bringing back two of the starters from the team that won that tournament. All right, fair enough. Um, and all of those matches, if you want to watch them individually, they're going to be as members only. And Correct. You're, you're still yet to be named Red Zone type, t- style of broadcast. Is that going to be for free? Yes, it is. Yeah, so the the every individual game will be members only on the VLA YouTube channel, not this one. Uh, look up Volleyball League of America. That membership is only ninety nine cents. So if you want to watch games, we we think that that's pretty reasonable. But yeah, the whole like the the long all day stream where we flip back and forth, like bounce house style or NFL Red Zone style, that'll be public, so everyone can watch that. And uh, as I asked the Discord last night to help me try and name that broadcast because I'm, I'm not creative. I can't figure out a name for it. If you think of a cool name for a volleyball broadcast that is like that, where we're just going to run it all day for a tournament, flip back and forth between courts, and, you know, just kind of jump around, talk about the games that are interesting at the time. If you've come up with a name for that, comment your suggestion on this video after the stream is over, and I'll read through them. If any of them are good, we might use it. I think it should be the VLA Spike Town uh, in honor of Danny Kinda, um, the great American <laughs> good uh, volleyball her- her- hero. Um, so I, I think I think that would be that would be a good one. Dude, are we getting uh, to the point where where pe- where kids these days are too young to have seen Danny Kinda? Yeah, I think that is the problem. I oh, think no. someone needs to find Dan Dan Kinda and and bring him back. Um, Those were because, legendary videos. Is, are they still available on YouTube? They've got to be. I sure hope so. Let's let's. I'm gonna do a quick little search here. Yeah, we'll um, we'll put them. Uh, we'll put them in the Discord. Put any kind of bed. volleyball. Oh, oh yeah, it's still it's still there. It's, awesome. It's still there. Oh, it's man. like probably the only like really entertainment piece of volleyball content that we've ever had, other than the anime. Honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Danny, Danny kind, of, kind awesome. of volleyball recruit. Danny kind of and the volleyball alphabet song. Danny kind of and Team USA, all classic. <laughs> All classic videos. I also had like t- Danny kind of merch when I was, when really? I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. I had a, a Gator shirt. Gator. I might steal the, that. Danny kind of don't get mad at us if we. If Clayton we... Lucas says that during broadcasts. He actually references Danny kind of during broadcasts. One of the only. Like funny that's because that's that's because does. that's when he did his research last. Okay, no, <laughs> uh, good one. There's no way he watches the show. Uh, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, watch. He's gonna watch that one clip. <laughs> um all right there, there's there's one other piece of news that came out today everett that's on a little more serious note that i do think we kind of need to talk about we we were talking about this in the brazilian channel of the discord today and we haven't covered the we haven't covered the brazilian club league very much this year because it's not very good like we we, we saw sada crucero get like pretty easily steamrolled at the club world championship it's just not as easy to follow along with but unfortunately the headline is that Wallace de Souza, uh, of course, the o- Olympic gold medalist opposite the captain of Sada Crucero, has been suspended indefinitely by his team. And the reason why is uh, amidst a whole lot of Brazilian political turmoil that I'm not going to get into. He posted a bunch of stuff on his Instagram story that uh, did a lot of things wrong. Uh, you can go, you can go see him for yourselves, or go like read the reports of exactly what was said or exactly what was implied. More important, I mean, I think we should, if we're going to bring it up, we should talk about it, right? If we're going to, if we're going to bring about it up and discuss it, we can't just, we can't be like, hey, let's talk about this and, and, and dance around the subject. Yeah, Essentially, he. Um, 
essentially is stated through his Instagram uh, story that the new president of Brazil should be shot. Um, and and now whether what no matter what side of the political you div- divide um, you you fall on, I don't think that's. I don't think that's acceptable in any forum, but especially for someone who has a platform and is the the person like the, and is the role model that he is. You know, not just for young people, but for so many uh, people. Um, I, I I just think that's wrong. Like, you know, like even even when Trump was in power, you know, it's not like people were were going out and saying like, "Hey, Trump should be shot," right? or or vice versa i mean there's 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 maybe people saying that biden should be shot but no one with you know no one in the nfl or nba no, right, right. Or, or 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 mlb you know like it's, it's all people with who want to say their stuff but if you are like he's the captain of the team he's an olympic champion he has a platform like that type of stuff like for, for me that suspension is no matter where you fall on the political spectrum that suspension is is absolutely appropriate Agreed. Totally justified. You, you, you can never. You can't even imply it. He didn't go out and say that the new president of Brazil should be shot. He implied it, and you just absolutely cannot do that in any way, shape, or form. Weirdly enough, like Brazilian volleyball is really attached to Brazilian politics, like on one side or the other, more so than most countries, and that's not really a good thing. Uh, we, we've heard about Mauricio Souza, uh, who's been kind of left out of most volleyball media these days i think he's into politics now probably not in a very good way but like you you can't do this if you're wallace you represent your country on an international scale you have an olympic gold medal for brazil you cannot at least even remotely talk about assassinating your president it's completely ridiculous so a a well-deserved suspension it says in sada crucero said indefinitely that just means until further notice, I would be surprised if we played the rest of the season. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I mean, we I've I've looked through the comments on their Instagram page. It seems like people have mixed uh, opinions on it. Um, but I agree. I definitely think it's the right right call by Sada Cruzeiro. And I would highly doubt if we saw him in a Brazil uniform ever again. Well, yeah, he already retired and unretired once. Exactly. To come, to come back for the world championship. I doubt we see that again, but especially not after this. Uh, so uh, lesson learned, people. Social media is dangerous. You can't just say anything you want, especially if you have an Olympic gold medal around your neck. So lesson learned right there. All right. Uh, anything else, Everett? I know that that's kind of a downer way to end the show, but it did. It did. It was worth bringing up because it did happen earlier today. Uh, yeah. What do we What do we got? We got Polish Cup tomorrow. We got uh, the normal Italian leagues this weekend. We got VLA Saturday, Sunday. We got a lot of good stuff as always. Yeah, absolutely. I think tomorrow uh, with some of those Polish Cup matches, they should be great. And uh, I'm definitely going to be checking out Verona versus Monza this weekend. I think I think those that's going to be the biggest match in in Italy for sure. So you know where to find us, ladies and gentlemen. The Discord link is in the description. If you're not already in there, that's where we're going to be talking about all this volleyball between now and next show. And next show, of course, same time, same place, next Tuesday right here on Volleyball Source. So uh, give us a follow all the places. Give this video a thumbs up. Let's see. What do we got? 17 right now. Oh, Guys, we, can do better. we can do better than that. Come on. There's be several hundred people that have watched this video. Uh, hit us with a thumbs up before we're out of here. And then after the video is over, leave a comment. If, if you think my my big VLA stream where we flip around the courts and stuff, if you think that has a if you have a name idea for that, put it in the comments afterwards. All right. Peace, guys. We'll see you in February.